so it's springtime here in the UK now, it's May. It's been quite wet recently, so some mushrooms will start appearing. And what we've discovered today, my wife discovered it, is the beginnings of a chicken in the woods, the sulfur polypore. This is a, a fantastic edible mushroom that when you fry it, deep fry it, it tastes like fried chicken, it genuinely does. It's an amazing mushroom. This is, a, this is obviously way too small to consume. This is day four, and as you can see, it's now developing out quite big and quite nice. Really looking good. Won't be long. As you can see, there is a slug on this one, and it's a terrible example, and it's way too small to eat. And then look at the size of it, it's tiny. So we need to go on search of... Other chicken of the woods. And fresh ones. fresh ones. And as luck would have it, we already found one the other day and we've actually already eaten it. So now we're going to show you finding the other one and then eating it. So we found another chicken of the woods and this one is bigger seen bigger than this but this is reasonably big and there's another bit here it's a little bit old but um we're going to take a piece anyway and have a cook of it yes these are supposed to be best these are supposed to be best when they're young and fresh but um I think beggars can't be choosers, is the expression. So here's the chicken of the woods and next to a wren for comparison. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go, we've got a piece of a chicken of the woods and it's not in the best condition, it's been a little bit eaten by slugs on the bottom. But it will be okay. I've eaten one like this before and it was fine. I was fine. People say you should get them young when they're more yellow and softer. But I'm fine with eating them like this. So what we're going to do is make chicken of the woods fajitas. So the first step, of course, is to give this a bit of a wash. Wash off any slug slime. Then we're going to chop it up into strips like you would chicken. So, let's take a look inside this bad boy. It's quite tough, quite woody, but if you look inside, you'll see that it's very nice, actually very clean, it's uninfected. It's got a kind of chalky um, feeling to it. This is why people go for the softer versions, because this can be a bit chalky in the mouth. I found if you deep fry that, it tends to homogenize it and that goes away. But, you know, this will be fine in the fajitas, it will absorb a lot of liquid and it will be fantastic. So, let's chop that up into chicken strips chicken pieces chicken of the woods pieces now the funny thing about chicken of the woods is we had some last year and we went swimming in the sea oh no the year before it seems to have some alkaloids in it that promote let's say promote living life to the full it's got very interesting compounds in it Gonna need some onion as well for the fajitas. Unfortunately, I've only got this in the fridge, but I found this in the garden, which is effectively a spring onion, an onion that's gone over, but it almost looks like an onion, so I think we can use that. Yeah, look at that, that's basically an onion, right? Cool. Just leave that to cook for a while. And that's our chicken and onion. There's the peppers which we'll add in later. So this is a guajillo chili from Mexico. 
and it's not very hot. It's about a 3 out of 10 on the heat scale, but it's got quite a lot of flavour in it. It's a classic Mexican chilli. So I'm going to add that into the fajita mix. But first of all, I'm going to rehydrate this. So in order to do that, I'm just going to put a bit of boiling water on it and leave it for a few minutes. I'm going to add that liquid then into the fajita mix as well and sort of boil it down a bit. Personally, I like to add some tomato to the fajita mix as it's going as a means of liquid. And so I'm just going to chop it up a little bit. So I'm just going to chop these in and they're going to add... Well, it seems like the light is going on the blink. They'll break down a bit and they'll add a bit of moisture in. Of course, fajitas are no good without spice. So we need to add in some spice. Now we've got these um, chipotle flakes and they're fantastic. So I'm going to add some of those in there. Sorry, I hear red in the background. As you can see, the fajitas are cooking away nicely now. And this stuff is kind of absorbing the flavor and whatever we chuck in there the chicken of the woods and you can see it looks a lot like chicken actually in there apart from the weird orange edge to it I think we need to add a bit of paprika in there so we're going to add a bit of cumin in there since this is already starting to get a bit dry I'm going to add the peppers in now I'm going to put the guajillo in with the water as well for the extra moisture. And then just let this cook for a bit, stir it in, and let the whole thing just cook for a bit with the lid on to sort of break everything down a bit. Then I'll add more flavours. Okay, so we're putting in onion granules. Okay, so I'm going to add a bit of onion granules in there. Just Tomato puree. And normally we put in garlic, but we've run out, so we're putting in some garlic paste. We've got a zombie effect. <laughs> nice. So this is getting there as a fajita mix. It's going to take a while to sort of cook down a bit and of course we've got to test it for flavour and so on but it's looking nice so I'm going to stick a bit of cayenne pepper in there don't want to make it too hot um, especially since Nicola's breastfeeding we don't want Ren to be you know, going through the roof I normally put pepper in as well as salt And a little bit of sugar, and since you know, for sugar, I'm going to stick a bit of jaggery in. It's obviously Indian, it's a sort of unrefined sugar, but it will be a nice addition. Just any unrefined sugar will do, really, because it just gives it a better, deeper flavour. And Normally what I stick in is something like bouillon powder or like a vegetable stock just to add a bit of depth to it. I'm eating a vegan diet at the moment so I um, will use, there's no meat in here at all, there's no animal products in here at all. Right, let's take a look at that. It's smelling great. You can obviously buy guacamole, but it's, just, it's a lot easier, I find, just to take an avocado, slice it open, and then scrape out the insides. Now, don't worry too much about any brown bits. They're actually still edible, as long as it's not, like, gone completely bad. You want the avocado to be soft. So then, of course, once you've got that out, you just chop it up. So as far as guacamole goes, you know, that'll just be fine as it is. Just avocado sauce, exactly as the name says. 
You can see that it's starting to look like fajitas now. That looks done to me. So here goes, let's make this bad boy up. Start with a bit of guacamole. Spread that out. A bit of salsa. And of course, some delicious chicken of the woods fajitas. That'll do to wrap this bad boy up somehow. There we go. So here we go, my friends. Let's try this out. See what a chicken of the woods fajita tastes like. Mm. That's really good. That is really good. I mean, take a look at the pieces here. I mean, that looks like a chunk of chicken, right? Um, let's absorb the flavours. You can still taste a bit of mushroom in there. But it's basically a fantastic substitute for chicken. But it's got loads more goodness in there. You don't have to kill any animals to consume it. You've got to kill a mushroom, but you can leave part of the mushroom and it's already spread most of its spores. So there you go. That is Chicken of the Woods fajitas, and that is awesome. Would you be able to guess from looking at that 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 wasn't chicken fajitas? I doubt it. And I reckon you could pretty much convince somebody that it was chicken fajitas. Mm. Tasty? Mm-hmm. Good. Cool. Mm -hmm.